good morning good afternoon good evening whatever time it is wherever you are welcome to beach walk blog today we're going to talk a little bit about muscles and what the muscles do and what what our running muscles are um, so when people talk about strength training for running they say i want to strengthen my running muscles and what i say to that is which muscles are doing what at what time so the gait cycle is a uh, 15 phase movement so think of how you run think of all of the the movements that coordinate together to create the running movement the running motion because of course it's not just one movement it's not like grabbing a dumbbell and doing a bicep curl we have elbow flexion elbow extension or eccentric elbow extension so it's a lot of different movements we have pronation supination dorsiflexion plantar flexion we have knee flexion knee extension hip flexion hip extension internal rotation external rotation blah 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 so on so on all the different parts of the body now of course muscles drive force muscles also respond to the load which is placed on the joints so we've got two different phases in running <coughs> well three phases we've got support phase swing phase and then of course we've got the float phase where there's nothing connected to the ground you're you're not you're flying you're floating flying whatever you want to call it so we're either supported where we have one foot on the ground or we are unsupported where we don't have a foot on the ground <laughs> i wonder what that was then <laughs> i just had a dog nipping at my ankles <laughs> Um, or we have um, a phase where we don't have any contact with the ground, so float phase. That was the dog that was nipping at my ankles. <laughs> um, so we've got to think of what movements occur at what place, at what time during the gait cycle and what they do. Now I see runners um, <clears throat> making a lot of mistakes, which is of course why they're not getting the results that they want. The mistakes that they generally make is that they don't train the muscles to produce the movements that they produce when we run. So I want to talk about the quads and the hamstrings specifically today. <clears throat> well, I want you to think about when your foot hits the ground, your foot is in front of you. So what are your hamstrings doing at that point? What are your quads doing at that point? Now, when your foot hits the ground, your knee will bend, your ankle will dorsiflex. That means that the, the uh, what happens is this. That's dorsiflexion, knee flexion. So we go into this uh, almost like a triple flexion phase where all of your joints, your ankle, your knee, and your hip all flex at the same time. Um, but we, or even though we are flexing those joints, what we're actually doing is we are preparing for the moment where we actually start to produce force to drive ourselves forwards because when the foot hits the ground we're actually uh we're, we're essentially we are breaking the leg because the leg stops stops producing forward movement it's actually producing backward movement is reverse thrust because when you land you're decelerating your body's going down so you're decelerating that forward uh, progression of your leg because if you didn't you'd face plant into the ground <clears throat> okay so which muscles are going to be doing that uh, which which body parts are going to be doing that it's going to be mainly your quads and your uh, gastrocnemius of the calf it's going to be the main ones that stop the knee from going too far forwards of course it's going to be your foot as well of course there's going to be some hip muscles going on there as well but we're talking specifically about what the quads do and what the hamstrings do now when we get to mid stance all of your weight and your your all of your weight is on your foot you're at the highest load point um, 
and your hamstrings are now in a position where they can produce really good hip extension and they do so in early stance phase your quads are doing a lot of work um, and your quads are holding on they're gripping really hard isometrically so that the fascial tissue can load and can, and can stretch and when the fascia loads and stretches the muscles are acting isometrically they're not they're not changing length it's the fascia that changes the length and that is mechanical loading mechanical force not chemical force produced from the muscle in a concentric action so this is the muscles are working isometrically we don't want them to work eccentrically okay the fascia loads eccentrically and stretches and then recoils and gives back the energy that it stores now in the late stage stage sorry uh, mid stance through to uh, toe off and beyond toe off as well actually but from specifically from mid stance onwards your hamstrings are going to be driving lots of force they're going to be concentrically contracting because they are extending the hip but they're not going to be bending the knee anymore until after toe off so we have to look at what these particular muscles are doing at what phase in gait to see the action that they're producing at their joint now contrary to what a lot of people think running is not jumping it's absolutely not jumping when you jump you produce vertical lots of upward force when you are running you're producing lots of forward propulsion so you're decelerating when you land you're you're uh, controlling the force the downward force when you land but then you don't produce this massive upward force like a lot of people want to do when they jump now remember I just said running is not jumping running is landing loading going past mid stance and then pushing forwards driving yourself forwards accelerating yourself forwards so let's make it even more basic and even more simple we have a deceleration phase and an acceleration phase and right in the middle we have a almost let's call it a negative uh, let's call it a neutral phase so a negative phase a neutral phase and a positive phase now let's think about that in terms of muscles we have a negative phase that's your quads <clears throat> so your quads are loading as we go into mid stance uh, as we come from early contact into mid stance but then your hamstrings are producing lots of force when we go into late stance towards toe off so let's 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 take that down into again running is not jumping it's slinging now what's your upper body doing at the same time now if my right leg lands my right shoulder is going to be behind me now when my i go to mid stance my right shoulder is going to be pretty much neutral my, my shoulders are going to be pretty much neutral my right shoulder should be down and then when I go into late stance, my right shoulder is in front of me. This is assuming right leg stance phase. <clears throat> so my upper body can produce a load of force to rotate and to drive my upper body over my lower body. And that's where all the connections occur. Because again, without my upper body producing lots of force, everything collapses. And of course we know it doesn't collapse because otherwise we wouldn't be running we'd be well we'd be face planting again right this is my favorite part of the beach where i come to i just love this little water bit it's always changing it's always changing it's different because of the the way that the landscape goes i love it it's so cool anyway i digress so in the uh in the basic eight 
and in the runner's rehab. What we do is we train the muscles by training the movements and applying the correct force in the correct place at the correct time. Now, like I've just said there, I've just broken down the gait cycle into the movement that occurs, the force that's imparted on the joints, and therefore the muscles have to act to control the joints, and then converted it into a training method that trains your body to do exactly that. Now remember, training is specific, right? Training isn't just random exercise. We don't just go out and just get the heart rate up. We want to do it specifically so that we get a trained outcome. We get a, uh, a known outcome. We're training for something. It's like learning Spanish or learning French or learning German or learning Chinese, whatever it is. You're, you're training your body, you're training your brain to learn, to, to listen, to recognize, and then to speak. And that's exactly what we're doing with the runner's rehab and the basic eight. We're training your brain and your body to learn a language of movement and then apply it over and over and over again. Same principle, it's just rather than learning a language, uh, you know, a speaking language, we're learning a movement language. We're moving, a, we're, we're learning a pattern. Okay. It's like a dance routine. We break it down into its little pieces and then we train it again and again and again. And because that's really what training is. It's repeating the same thing over and over again and we just follow the principles of training. So we learn it, we repeat it, we reinforce it, then we learn it again, but better. And then we reinforce it a little bit better and then we overload it and then we go back to the basics again and we learn the basics again we retrain those basics and the reason why we do that is because as we change everything changes you can't change one thing without changing something else and you when you change the something else you also change the one thing whatever that one thing is so it's a constant process of learning reinforcing overloading relearning reinforcing or re-reinforcing and then overloading. But if we're doing the wrong thing, then we are training the wrong thing, right? It's kind of obvious really, isn't it? Training is specific and we're, we're training the specific thing to do a specific thing at a specific time in a specific place. And the gait cycle is what explains that all to us. So, in overtraining your quads, what you're doing is you're actually causing yourself to put the brakes on more and more and more. You're overloading the hamstrings. Now remember there's certain exercises that train your quads much, much, much more than they do your hamstrings. For example, squats. Squats train your quads way more than they will ever train your hamstrings. And it doesn't matter what you do, you're always training your quads more than your hamstrings. And remember, your quads are muscles that need to be doing two things. They need to be either swinging your leg from here to here, extending your knee when the leg is off the ground or for a microsecond when your foot hits the ground they stop you from face planting for a microsecond now remember you've been running or you did run as a kid first thing you did <clears throat> when you learnt to stand up and walk was then transition to to running we see babies doing this all the time so you knew how to do this and you were strong enough to do this when you were a baby when you were a toddler, when you were two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, all the way up, you were you were strong enough to do that. You didn't need to be stronger. You didn't need to train squatting or squats to get stronger. You were already doing it. You were already perfectly capable of doing it. Okay, so we don't need to do these things. We don't need to, need to do squats and, and add weights because we have gravity to help us do that. 
gravity does that perfectly for us. Okay, so in training the wrong thing in the wrong place at the wrong time, what you're doing is you're actually making yourself better at braking and worse at accelerating. Now, running is a constant state of re-accelerating what has been braked. Okay, so when your foot hits the ground, you're then braking, and there's no getting out of it, because that's what it is. It's just a question of how much you do it. Now remember, pronation is our way of avoiding braking. So when your quads are decelerating you, that, it's not, a, it's not a true braking force because another part of your body is still accelerating or still, uh, still moving. So you never come to a complete stop. So although yes, the quads are there to, to, to break you, to, to slow you down, what they're there for is really just to slow down the rate of uh, downward force into the ground as you pronate. And what happens is that as one part of the body stops moving or slows down or doesn't, doesn't move quite as fast, another body part does. Another body part does. So certain things kind of come to a almost an abrupt stop, <clears throat> but something else picks up the slack and moves at, an, at the same speed or, the, or keeps things moving, should I say. Now think about this, your center of mass never stops moving forwards. It's just parts of your body that stop moving so quickly forwards as something else then accelerates. Okay, so pronation is a movement that occurs when your quads are breaking you, your foot and ankle are pronating to allow your center of mass to continue moving forwards at the same rate. Okay, because remember you, although things change speed, your center of mass continues to move forwards at the same rate and pronation and knee flexion and hip flexion and torso rotation and lateral torso flexion allow us to do these things. They allow us to continue to move our center of mass forwards at the same rate, even though one part of our body has actually pretty much come to a stop. Everything ro rotates and revolves around that body part. That's the slinging com component. That's where I say that running isn't jumping. Because it isn't. It's not jumping. It's slinging. Which is why it's called the sling method. It's the reason why it's called the sling method. And that's the reason why I don't do all of this jumping up stuff because you don't need to you don't need to you need to work on propelling yourself forwards that's what you need to work on so the running movement really gives us all the information that we need it gives us all the information that we need to train for running it tells us exactly the joint actions that we need it tells us exactly what needs to happen at what place at what time during the gait cycle. And it also tells us that if we train the wrong thing or if we overload the wrong thing, because that's what training is, remember, it's overloading something. If we train the wrong thing, then we could in fact be making things worse or at, you know, at worst, making things worse, at best, just not making it better. Okay, and our goal with training is to make everything better. Make it so that it functions better. So, are you, I'm gonna leave this on one final little question here. Functional training has to look at the function 
of what it's training for. The clue's in the name, functional training. What is functional training for running? Well, it's training the running movement. It's training the running movement to function better. Now, if you go back to the start of what I said, we have muscles that accelerate, muscles that decelerate. All right, and running isn't jumping, it's slinging. What we have to do is look at what we're training to make sure that we're getting the right overload, the right training effect in the right place at the right time. And then we can see whether your training is functional or dysfunctional for your running. So I'm gonna leave you to ponder on that question. Is your running training, is your training for running, training running? If it's training running, therefore you have to be training the gait cycle movements. Therefore, you have to be training with the sling method because the sling method is exactly that. Is your training functional for running or is it dysfunctional? And I'm gonna leave it there. If you're not training the running movement, then your training for running is dysfunctional. Okay, remember, squats are not training the running movement. They're also completely negating the hamstrings. Completely negating the hamstrings. They're not training the hamstrings at all. Because if they're training, then it has to have an overload effect. And there's no way that you're gonna get an overload effect on the hamstrings by doing squats. It, it can't happen, ever. Ever, 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 can't happen, okay? Have a great rest of your day.